Welcome everybody. Happy Monday. Mm, greetings. I'm trying to be wise with my words. Um, I don't like saying hello because I don't want hell to be the first thing that comes out of my mouth. I'm backing away from saying good morning because morning, morning, different, you know what I'm saying? I'm just playing with different words. How's everybody doing? How was your weekend? Um, who are you? Let us know in the chat who you are. <laughs> Let us know if it's your first time. Let us know where you're joining from, how your weekend was. Um, you might be able to see my beautiful tan line. I was on the motorcycle all weekend, um, and here's where my headband was sitting the whole weekend, so I got some sun. <laughs> Charlotte says, happy Monday, beautiful souls. Jackie says, greetings, lovely Jackie and friends. Jennifer, good morning, Jackie and room. Hi, Karen. Greg says, hello, beautiful people. Good morning, everyone from Bonnie. Christine says, happy Monday, Jackie and tribe. Jennifer, good morning, Jackie and everyone. Greg is in Rochester. Rochester. I feel like I'm saying that wrong. Rochester, New York. <laughs> Laura is from London. Welcome. It's your first time, Laura. Beautiful. Thanks for being with us. Hi, Joy. Fiorella says, good morning. Beautiful Jackie and fam. April, good evening from Japan. Hi, April. Fiorella is representing San Diego. I love it. If it's your first time with me, my name is Jackie Mancuso. I'm joining you guys from Northern Illinois, and today we're here to talk about what Mercury is doing in the sky, and then we'll pull some oracle cards to see how to utilize the energy to serve our highest good. Teresa says, good morning from Nova Scotia. Where is Nova Scotia? It sounds so familiar, but geography is not my strong suit. Greg says, welcome to Laura. Love it. Hello, Lori. Greetings, everyone. And Jackie. Chantel. Hi, Jackie. I've drawn out my natal chart. It wasn't as easy as I thought. It's a practice. It takes, it's a lot of learning, but you can do it. Thank you, Christine. Nova Scotia is in Canada. I would never have put that together. It sounds very like island-esque, like a tropical. Sammy, first time joining from North Carolina. Hello. Hello to another one of our Jackies. Patty says, howdy friends. Greeting from sunny New Jersey. Welcome, Patty. Kelsey, that kind of tan line means you probably had an awesome weekend. I was just saying, I was on the motorcycle all weekend and this is where my bandana rested on my forehead, so. Whatever, it'll be gone in a week. I love it. Christine says, Teresa, my sister lives in Yarmouth, Nova Scotia. Oh, cool. Melissa says, good morning. And Melinda says, hello, Jackie and all. Hi, Elena. All right, guys, so today we're talking about Mercury because he is on his way out of Virgo. Mercury right now is at 25 degrees of Virgo. Um, you know, today I wasn't planning on getting specific with your birth chart. There wasn't anything that like I wanted you to look out for, but if you want, if you want to look and just see if there's anything in your chart between 25 and 29 of Virgo, one of Libra, the last five degrees of Virgo, that is where Mercury will be moving on today, tomorrow, and Wednesday. So... On his way out of Virgo, Mercury is going to form an opposition to Neptune at 25 degrees of Pisces. So that, that'll happen later today. And then tomorrow, Mercury is going to form a trine to Pluto at 27 of Capricorn. So we'll break both of these down. Um, and then surprise, we're gonna pull cards for Mercury opposing Neptune, and then we're gonna pull a card for Mercury trying Capricorn, just to keep you on track. So later today, Mercury is going to oppose Neptune. Oppositions always give us this push-pull feel. Um, you feel like you wanna run head on and 
clash your interests and then you also might feel like you want to run completely opposite and go your own way <clears throat> when when planets oppose each other that means that they're in the signs that oppose each other in the zodiac which creates an axis so we have mercury in virgo opposite neptune in pisces this is a push and pull between our logical minds and our dreams this opposition is also strengthened because both planets are in their own signs of rulership. Mercury is the ruler of Virgo and Neptune is the ruler of Pisces. So this energy just amplifies and heightens the axis of service and surrender. Virgo service, Pisces surrender. So how much are we really meant to act in whatever situation is coming to mind for you right now. How much are we meant to actually take action and versus how much are we meant to surrender, to let go um, and allow the universe to surprise us in this situation. So, and whatever, like I can't pinpoint what situation this might be just use your intuition whatever is taking up most of your brain space right now i advise you to translate these messages from the planets to your situation so it's like our logical minds mercury and virgo are telling us to work 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 uh, virgo is the sign of your daily work what your routine looks like what you check off your checklist every day and then that is opposing our dreamy intuition, Neptune and Pisces, calling us to surrender and flow and not give up, but let, let go. So we're gonna use the cards to ask about that. How can we best utilize this opposition? How can we bring balance to this opposition? And then, um, should I talk about it now or should I talk about it? I mean, I'll talk about it now. Tomorrow, Mercury will then move on to form a trine to Pluto. So trines occur when the planets are 120 degrees away and it makes a nice equilateral triangle in the sky. It's harmonious. Um, trines, I always say it's like the planets high five each other or they give each other a thumbs up across the sky. They're winking at each other. It's supportive. So Mercury will be at 27 of Virgo and Pluto is at 27 of Capricorn. So Pluto and Capricorn is already, he's been there for, you know, since 2008. He's been there for a long time. He's almost done with his job of getting to the bottom. That's what Pluto does, he digs down. So Pluto is getting to the bottom of our structures, Capricorn, our routines, our obligations. So, Mercury trining Pluto to me feels like an aha moment. Um, it's like something practical because these are in earth signs. This is an earth trine. So something practical is coming to light um, that is ready to be left behind. So Pluto's role in, you know, and he moves really, really slow. So he works on one spot for a long time. So his role is to dig down, expose everything, investigate, get to the bottom of what's really going on. And then his last step, his final step, is to bring the diamond up to the surface to show you, here, I found this. <laughs> As I was digging through all of those details, I found this. This is what we want to empower. So having this supportive trine from Mercury, it's almost like our logical mind is gonna have one of those aha moments, like, oh, I see the diamond. It's, uh, it's ready to be brought up, um, but something about this trine feels more like, okay, I see the diamond, I'm gonna hang on to that, and I have to wash away some of this dirt that's around it. That's what this feels more like to me. So I'm feeling that this Mercury trine Pluto might help you be ready to leave something behind, some material object, Earth signs, Capricorn, Virgo, Earth. This might 
be leaving behind a practical goal that you've been striving for, an amount of money, a type of structure, a type of house, a type of job. This feels like you're ready to move beyond a physical goal post that you've set for yourself in order to reach something different that's more in alignment with you. So we'll see what the cards have to say about that. Um, but I was also feeling like this might coincide with Pluto changing direction. So Pluto has been retrograde since May 1st. He has kind of been turning those energies inwards, like digging to the bottom of ourselves. When planets turn retrograde, the energies turn inwards and it turns into like a review and reflection phase. So since May 1st, May, June, July, August, September, five months, right? Yeah, June, July, August, September, October. Yeah, five months. Um, Pluto's kind of been helping us dig inside of ourselves. How do we structure our own soul? How do we structure our own routines, our own lives, our own responsibilities? What are What pressure are we putting on ourselves? So with Mercury trying, Pluto retrograde, we might be having that aha moment like, well, I've been setting my goalpost here and maybe it doesn't need to be over here. Maybe this is more in alignment over here. So I feel like this aha moment of Pluto trying Mercury might coincide with Pluto stationing direct on the 10th of this month. In just over a week, Pluto is going to station direct. So this is where Pluto, I feel like, will start to do something with that diamond that we see. We see it. We know what's there. This might be shifting the path that we're supposed to take to get to that diamond, if that makes sense. Um, and then this also, the energy might shift when Mercury enters Libra on Wednesday. Uh, because Mercury is finishing up his time in Virgo. When planets are at the very end of the signs, to me, it feels like a mastery of that energy. Like Mercury is helping us think. Mercury is the planet of thoughts and ideas and communication. He's helping us think about the highest evolved themes of Virgo. Mutable Earth moving around your physical, changing things up changing the goalpost, which is okay to do every once in a while. It's not a failure if you redirect your energy from one goal to another, as long as you feel like you're still working in alignment with your highest good, if that makes sense. Let me know if any of that resonated with you guys, and we'll get to the cards in just a second. Maria says, good morning. I'm here. I'm glad you're here, Maria. So we are first going to ask, okay, cool. It's resonating with Greg. Beautiful. So let's go backwards in our minds for a second. We talked about the opposition between Mercury and Neptune. This is the push-pull between logic and dreams. How much are we supposed to be work, 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 Mercury and Virgo, we think we're supposed to be freaking doing and doing and doing, versus how much are we really supposed to be Neptune and Pisces? I'm seeing this as like you let go of the rope and then you're just like floating in the abyss. Push pull. So how to balance, how can we balance this opposition between Mercury and Neptune, our thoughts and our dreams? <laughs> We're going to use the Gateway of Light Activation Oracle. How do we balance Mercury opposite Neptune? And these are always group readings, so I invite you to send your energy into this deck, asking your highest selves, your highest guides, source, whoever you work with, how can you best balance the opposition between Mercury and Neptune? I will allow three cards to come out for the collective. And then I will ask you guys to use your intuition as I hold up the back of the cards. Um, and then 
see just if anything changes in your reality. If anything is different. Could be you hiccup, <laughs> you burp, you fart, <laughs> your stomach growls, you get a ringing in your ears. Uh, if anything changes in your physical body when I hold up a certain card, that could just be your body saying like, ooh, pay attention to that one. The whole reading is for all of us. So if nothing happens, you're fine. <laughs> it's just the whole reading is equally for you. Uh, or if something changes in your physical environment, um, if an ad starts playing on the YouTube channel that you're watching, or if your house creaks, or you know, if a dog starts barking outside, those are all the universe helping you tune your attention to what's happening. So, these came out really fast. Thanks for all your energy. We're asking how to balance the opposition between Mercury and Neptune. Here's the back of card number one. The back of card number two. And the back of card number three. Let us know in the chat which of those cards are calling more strongly to you. If it's none of them or all three of them, let us know that. It's all of them. And I'll show them again just in case. Here's the back of card number one. The back of card number two. And the back of card number three. Happy birthday, Joy. She's choosing two because today is the second. All right, let's see who's working with what. Hello, S. Jackie's working with one. Patty, two. Amanda, three. Jessica, one and three. Wynn, one. Maria, one and three. Vicky, one. Greg, all three. JG, three. S, two. April, one. S, three. Christine, two. Chantel, one and three. Lori, three. Melissa, all three today. Jackie, one and three for details. Karen, one and three. Yvonne, feeling two and three. Christine, all three, but two is stronger. Bonnie, three. Jennifer, two and three. Sammy, one. Melinda, one and maybe three. Nicole, one and two. Jennifer, two. Um, I'm just going to say this out loud, Melinda. So I've been, and I don't know why, it just feels right, but like when I read the numbers, I'm tapping the cards to like put your name energy into the cards. And I read for you, Melinda, one and maybe three, and my hand barely didn't, it didn't even touch card one, like it stopped me. So I think three is stronger for you. I'm just going to say that out loud. Don't know why. Um, all right, let's see. Jean says, a house sparrow tweeted for each card. So all of them today. I love that. That was pretty cool. Tweet, tweet. <laughs> all right. How to balance the opposition between Mercury and Neptune. Feeling, thinking that we have to work, work, work versus feeling ready to surrender. Christine, you burped on two? What are you letting go of? All right. Um, I got an out for delivery notification with card two. Oh, oh, I love it. We'll see how that comes out. All right, card number one is the Stargate Heart. It's okay, Lucy. Of course it's all three. The whole reading has equal importance for you today then. So card number one is Stargate Heart, Heart Chakra Opening, Unlocking Generosity. The heart chakra is our connection to love and generosity. When opened, it can take us on a powerful expedition to experience love. In Sanskrit, it is known as anahata, which means unstruck or even unbroken, revealing that even though we may feel our heart is broken, 
our true spiritual heart is always whole. The heart chakra governs all aspects of our heart, including relationships, what lights us up, and of course, our self-worth. This gateway transports us to an emerald city, the temple of our heart. This sacred space within is a place of wonder and love. Here we are reminded of the sacredness we hold within and are encouraged to know that although it's like a hidden treasure, this beauty deserves to be seen and enjoyed by the outer world. In the gateway image, there is a path to the Emerald City, but it is a path less traveled. This can represent many years of denying our self-worth and also moments during many lifetimes when we've pushed love away. But now we are moving closer to the love we are. Your heart space is a sacred space deep within you. For some time, you have protected it with psychic shields that have not only stopped you from being hurt, but also stopped you from feeling love. This gateway appearing shows that you have finally dropped those shields and are ready to experience love. Universal Wisdom wants you to know that this is your divine right. You are a highly empathic and generous soul who has so much to give, and you are being called forth to, revel to reveal the deeper and more vulnerable aspects of your being. Divine light beings are surrounding you, holding you, and encouraging you to relax. All the restrictions and blockages of your heart space have now been removed. The worst is behind you, and the world needs you. Let me know how that resonated for you guys, but the message that was coming through the most strongly for me, um, especially because we're asking about balance, and I'm feeling Mercury in Virgo, Earth grounded. I'm feeling root chakra there. Like you need to do this stuff because of your security, root chakra. And then uh, Pisces, Neptune in Pisces, crown chakra, just way up there in the ethereal dreamy plant dreamy dreamy place uh swirling all around and then how do you balance that is you go to the center you go to your heart you lead from the heart um that's what was coming out most strongly for me and then what that card was talking about was if you protect yourself from being hurt if you protect yourself from not being safe think root chakra you gotta hold you know hold your security, hold on to your security. You're blocking every part of the heart. You're not just blocking the hurt, you're blocking the love that can be coming in as well. Greg says, wow, Christine resonated for you with all those green hearts. Melinda, that really resonated for me. Yvonne really felt that card and I didn't choose one. The whole reading is always for all of us, guys. You know, just because one card calls to you doesn't mean that that's the only card you're supposed to listen to. That card just might have like a stronger, more specific message. Maria says your head is tingly too. Beautiful message from Joy. Yeah, we'll see how the rest of the reading comes out, but this really feels like just opening the heart. You know, closing the heart chakra because you're afraid of getting hurt isn't only closing off the hurt. You can be blocking a lot of healing that way as well. Hello, Erica. Everyone always gets here just in time. <laughs> We're about to read card number two, so I wonder if that is the strongest card for you. We're asking, how can we balance the opposition between Mercury and Neptune? Our logic and our dreams. Yeah, logic to me feels like root chakra. Dreams feels like crown chakra. How do we balance it? We live through the heart. It's where everything translates. Card number two brings us to the chamber of the violet flame. And look at Erica with that purple heart, and here's the violet flame card. This is a karmic release and radical transformation. The violet flame is a spiritual retreat space that holds a powerful energy of transmutation and transformation. It can be visited in meditation and invoked through prayer and affirmation. 
Spiritually, it is seen within a chamber, often as a giant roaring flame, and sometimes with silver and gold shining through the violet. When we connect with the violet flame, we are being given the opportunity to detach from lower vibrational experiences and turn darkness into light. Ultimately, this is the gateway of alchemy. Alchemy is the art of turning lead into gold. And so from an energetic perspective, the violet flame is where we place all that is leaden and heavy in our life and turn it into a golden opportunity. When you receive this card, know that the violet flame of transformation has been brought to you by your angels and guides. They are encouraging you to see that you are in a space of radical transformation. Transformation can be overwhelming, but know that, but know the hand of the divine is leading the way. All past trauma is now being cleared from your energy. Stay focused on releasing all of the energies that are no longer serving you. The violet flame is here to transmute fear into love. If any fear is rising up inside you now, know that it is simply a call for love. Call in the strongest form of love you know and allow those in your inner circle to support you through this transformational time. You are an alchemist with the capacity to take all the leaden aspects of your life and turn them into golden opportunities. You can align your life with the divine plan now and live in a more purposeful way. The violet flame is so powerful, Bonnie. Um, the, I love that this is talking about transmutation and love. This is walking right through the reading so beautifully. So how to balance the opposition between Mercury and Neptune? Um, so I do feel a lot of fears coming up with this Mercury opposite Neptune. Um, your mind can get, can like grab hold onto what you could be afraid of. And then Neptune also is the planet of illusion. So it might be highlighting something that isn't as it seems, and that can cause fear to come up. And what this card is asking us to do is to transmute that fear into love. And this is something that I'm like starting to have a deeper understanding of actual transmutation, doing it in the process um, or doing it in the moment. And I'm trying to think of a time that I've transmuted fear. Well, I guess all emotions can be reduced down to love or fear. So I've transmuted anger. Like that's what I've been able to do in the past. So I'm just going to tell you how I've done that and see if that resonates with you guys at all. Um, so a, a handful of times, actually, um, my neighbor did something that wronged us. We'll just leave it at that. And I had anger about it. I was angry that I had to change my life because of something that they did. So instead of hanging on to the anger and resentment, I sent them love. And I said, I hope that this person is able to live a more joyous and grateful life. And then since that, everything has been fine. Everything's been wonderful, you know? Um, another time I was, <laughs> there was a time that someone needed my, someone thought that they needed my attention and I wasn't able to give it to them at that time. And they put anger on me and they like yelled at me and told me that, you know, everyone abandons them and all this stuff. Um, so in that moment, instead of taking what I received and harboring it and holding on to it and saying like, F that person, they're yelling at me, they're the bad guy, I took those feelings and I wrote in my journal, I hope this person calls in someone who can give them exactly what they need. One month later, they're in a relationship for the first time in 10 years. Transmutation actually works. Um, so if there's anything like that, if there's anything that's causing fear within you, instead of holding on to the fear, instead of giving all of your attention to the fear, I'm afraid, I'm afraid, I'm afraid, like what if, what if? How can you turn that into love? How can you transmute that energy into love? If you need a physical like representation, use the violet flame. Go into a meditation, 
hold the fear in front of you however you can visualize it some people will give it a color a shape a person an event like look at the fear and then literally toss it into the violet flame and watch it transmute into love let me know if that helps you guys christine says i was seeing the violet flame while meditating this weekend yep this speaks to me um the violet flame as far as my knowledge goes it's violet because violet is the highest vibrational color that we can see with our human eyes so the violet flame transmutes to the highest possible vibration Yvonne says transformation is the third or fourth time I've heard that from a card transmutation has been coming up hardcore for me for weeks um, and I just keep noticing it. And alchemy and that theme is so strong. It's probably helping us get into Scorpio season because <laughs> that's, that's, we have three more weeks, but that's what Scorpio season's all about. Hello, LaDonna, welcome. JG says, amazing. Joy says, Violet shows up every time I meditate. I love it. I love it. Violet keeps hearing your name. I wonder why. <laughs> Yep, and Violet's associated with the crown chakra. Jean, those are great examples. I see fear as black smoke that I can breathe out and leave a beautiful violet glow in its place. That's great, Jean. Yeah, just let it go. And as you let this stuff go, also, you know, like, do your own work to transmute it into love. Watch it literally alchemize. Change chemical composition from fear into love. And then if there's part of it that you're not able to get all the way switched, <laughs> intend that the universe will take care of it. You know, intend that the, uh, the lingering energy will be used for the highest purpose. Because, um, you know, maybe someone needs that fear in that moment to help them through something. So maybe that's how it's going to be transmuted. Not necessarily through your work, but it's, that's a whole, whole thing. Erica says, love this. I need to transform the falsehood of fear being created. I love it. I always feel like fear is made up. I think this is where fear comes from, the mind. And the unknown, fear of the unknown. The unknown isn't scary. I love the unknown. Jean, my fears are linked to catastrophic thinking of the future. Gotta stick to the present moment. Yeah, what if it's gonna be the greatest thing you've ever experienced? What if everything just works out better than you expected it to? What if your dreams don't come because better things are on the way? You can play games with the what if. All right, so on to card three. How do we balance the opposition between Mercury and Neptune? Logic and dreams. Yeah, Diana, what if everything works out? Aaron says, my six-year-old son chose a purple bracelet for my husband to buy for him this weekend. Hubby got him a child's purple tiger's eye bracelet. So cool. I love it, Aaron. Love it, love it. This next card kind of looks like traditional tiger's eye. Um, so card three brings us into the halls of learning. And the message from this card is spirit guides confirmation, great lessons. The halls of learning, also sometimes known as the great halls, are an etheric retreat dedicated to spiritual knowledge. They are a training space for all souls, including those on earth, spiritual guides, and those between lives. They have been visited by many spiritual seekers, seers, and mediums over the years, and have been described as a giant, somewhat gothic university building with marble flooring, spiral staircases, and tall bookcases. Some have said these halls are home to the Akashic Records, while others have wondered if they are connected to the halls of Amenti. I can confirm that these are actually two different retreats says Kyle Gray, the author of this deck. 
Ultimately, this etheric retreat is an ancient mystery school, and it is particularly powerful for those who are opening up their psychic and clairvoyant abilities. If this gateway comes to you often, it brings confirmation that your psychic gifts are strengthening. Also, if the idea of an ancient mystery school is in the astral if the idea of an ancient mystery school in the astral realm seems familiar, there's a good chance that you've been here during dream time or even in between incarnations. These great halls are held within the heart of Source and are a projection of the divine mind's infinite intelligence. When we visit them, we are connecting directly with the wisdom of Source. You are on the path to great learning. Spiritual beings are drawing close to support you. If you are facing challenging or difficult circumstances, or have just moved through such a time, you are being called to review what you have learned about yourself. If you're still feeling overwhelmed by a certain event or asking why it happened, Call on Source and your guides to reveal to you the pattern, trauma, or wound that has contributed to this challenge. If you aren't experiencing challenging energy, the reason is that you've made huge progress on your spiritual journey, so much so that your perspective has shifted so that you can view every challenge as a window of opportunity. The Halls of Learning Gateway indicates that your spiritual gifts are developing at this time. There's a lot in this card. Um, I feel like we are being brought into the Halls of Learning to help us through whatever is happening right now. So if you are going through a challenging time, this is just a huge reminder that you're in a lesson. You're in the middle of a lesson. You're in the middle of learning how to transmute something. You're in the middle of learning how to live from the heart and not so much from fear. I love this. I feel like this opposition between Mercury and Neptune, we're going this way today, between Mercury and Neptune is like thrusting us into the halls of learning thrusting us into our heart. Like if you want to not feel this uncomfortable push-pull, you kind of have to just live through the heart and allow love to take over any fear. Allow love to be as strong as it is to transmute any fear. And sometimes it makes it easier to do that when you understand that this is a time of learning, that it's not like this forever. You're not broken. There's nothing wrong with you. You didn't make a bad choice. You're just in the middle of unit five, chapter four, you know, <laughs> like you're just in the middle of this lesson of your life. This card also talked a lot about spiritual gifts. And I had to check myself. I was like going through this whole thought as I was reading the card. Um, so when I like first hopped into the spiritual world, I felt like it was all about ascension, go higher, open your crown chakra, connect, connect above. And the less I did that and the more I focused on grounding down, get into the 3D, like work with what you have, you know, 5D is the goal, I guess. And I'm questioning that because I'm talking about this transit is maybe moving our own goalposts. Um, but like, yeah, like 5D ascension, cool is, is the thing, but like we're here in the 3D. We're meant to ground down. But now I feel like we're feeling that push-pull between the two. Like, do you really want to ascend or do you really want to be grounded here in the 3D? I think the heart is the key. Balance them both. Walk the middle path. Live from love. Yvonne says, that's how I'm teaching myself, Diana, changing my what ifs from a place of worry to a place of joy. Love that. Bonnie, what do you mean you took over card three? Jean says, well, that's a perfect manifestation of a Mercury Neptune aspect. It's a lesson. Everything is a lesson. 
It's a lesson of how to transmute fear into love. That's kind of, you know, one of our biggest magical powers is transmutation. It's possible. It just takes a little bit of willpower. Bonnie says, the message is so for me. I love it. Love it, love it. Our second deck we're going to pull from. Um, we're going to ask about the Mercury-Pluto trine. So if you missed the talk earlier, I post all of these replays to my YouTube channel so you can check up with the astrology later today when it goes up there in a couple hours. Just search my name on YouTube. I put all my replays there. Um, but tomorrow, Mercury and Pluto are forming a trine. So this is harmonious energy. They're helping each other out. Pluto likes to dig down to the bottom of things and like show us, expose the things that we don't necessarily want to see. And Mercury helps us, you know, have clear thought. So I'm feeling an aha moment. Like something is coming where we just realize like, oh, I don't want that anymore. That, that physical thing, that material thing, that concrete thing, that's not for me. Um, so we're going to use the dragon oracle cards to ask what aha moment Mercury and Pluto are bringing to us. <coughs> My goodness. So this deck was calling out to me for this question, and then I sat with it for a second. I'm like, there's no way. There's no way that this deck is going to answer this question. So we'll see what comes out. What aha moment are Mercury and Pluto bringing to us? Joe, can transmutation become automatic? Yes. Uh, I feel like after quite some practice. It's, I think anything can become automatic based on what your subconscious is trained and programmed to do. So it's going to take a lot of conscious effort at first to choose to transmute. And then, yeah, I think it become automatic. Is that a new deck, Christine? Um, I got this deck at the end of June at a festival, and I've used it like maybe once or twice on Insight Timer. Um, I'm using it more for personal. I'm still kind of learning this deck. It's taking me a second. Um, but the Monday garbage truck. <laughs> I feel like uh, the Mondays that I'm not on Insight Timer, the garbage guys come really, really early. And then when I am on Insight Timer, it's like, ah, oh, Jackie's on Insight Timer, skirt! <laughs> Just kidding. Um, it's really nice out, so I have to have my windows open. And this window is facing the street, so yeah, it's the whole thing. It's a whole thing. It's a spiritual muscle. I like that, Greg. I love it, Angie. Angie's garbage pickup is on Mondays, too. Bonnie, I hope you mean in your car. She says my daughter and I were hit by a garbage truck. <sighs> Is that the fear that you're meant to transmute into love while you're here on my insight timer? That's not fun. My friend's mom was also a garbage truck backed up into her car. Crazy thing. All right, guys, uh, send your energy, please, into this deck. What aha moment are Mercury and Pluto bringing us? Bringing to us. At least someone is taking out our trash. Yeah, there's some transmutation, you know? Anything that we were not able to get rid of, you know, I just sent it into my garbage can. And now the, the garbage guys are taking care of it. Interesting. I want to hear that story one day, Bonnie. Um, all right, Mercury trying Pluto. Aha moment. If you guys have been enjoying today's session and you would like to offer an exchange of energy, you can always throw in a donation. They're never expected, but they're always very appreciated. Uh, you can also follow me here on Insight Timer if you haven't done so yet. I do this astrology and oracle thing quite often. Um, I'll be back on Wednesday to talk about Mercury entering Libra. Um, and then you can also just check out my link tree. It's the website that's available in my Insight Timer bio. 
uh, Linktree slash Jackie Mancuso. And that's where all of my links are because I'm all over the place. I do a whole bunch of stuff, but you can find like my Facebook, my YouTube, um, my TikTok is in there, my mailing list <clears throat> to sign up to my mailing list. My goodness. My goodness is everywhere. It's not just in my link tree. Um, yeah, that's it. <clears throat> thank you, Charlotte, and thank you, Jackie, for your donations. Let's see uh, what aha moment we can count on for Mercury and Pluto. And this comes from the pure white dragon from Orion. Transforms your ascension knowledge into pure wisdom. Process what you know, act with truth and honesty, let your wings of light grow and expand. Orion is the planet of wisdom, the ability to take the knowledge we obtain through our left brain and use it joyfully for the highest good of all. Beings from many star systems take their understanding to Orion to ask how to use it with wisdom. All the beings from Orion, including the seventh dimensional pure white dragons, carry a special light in their soul. The color white indicates purity, clarity, and advanced enlightenment. Archangel Gabriel, the unicorns, and the great white, great white brotherhood all hold this incredible level of purity. Source light is diamond white. As white holds the vibration of truth, when the pure white dragons from Orion shower it onto us, it lights up our own impeccable honor and brilliance. They are preparing us for greater advancement on our ascension path. A pure white dragon of Orion has come to you today to advise you to examine what you know with enlightened eyes. Process any information you are working with through your right brain to discover how to use it for the highest good. The high frequency dragons from Orion will be with you to help you with this process. They will allow you to advance your spiritual growth and expand your wings of light. When you hold white in your aura, people trust and respect you. This card calls on you to speak your truth, act with honesty, and be totally honorable in all your dealings. So I just had another, I know we're, this card was about Mercury and Pluto and I'll get there. Um, but this whole Mercury Neptune opposition, I'm feeling left brain, right brain. That's not one of like my go to ways to describe things, but this card called it out hardcore. Left brain, logic, Mercury in Virgo. Right brain, intuition, creativity, Neptune in Pisces. Uh, this is. This card is calling you to take all those left brain logical facts that you've accumulated. Oh, this person did this thing. This event happened. Truth, fact, hardcore evidence, grounded, earthy. You, you get where I'm going with this left brain? And you, the pure white dragons from Orion are helping you to transmute all of that fear-based thinking into right brain love through the halls of learning because this is a spiritual lesson that you are completing. So what aha moment are Mercury and Pluto bringing to us? A truth. It's truth. Right? Nothing is good or bad. You can have your facts about the situation. You can have the hardcore concrete evidence, uh, but your opinion about those facts is just that. It's your opinion about those facts. How can you look at it from a lighter side of truth? How can you remove yourself? How can you remove your ego from the situation and look at it with pure white light? Truth, honesty, and honor. Yeah, it's, this, is, this is showing me that, like, whew, you've used your heart 
and your love, right? By opening your heart, you've been able to transmute already. You've been able to transmute a lot of fear already. And those were times that you were brought into the halls of learning. And this is just another lesson. This is just another cycle in this game of life. That is pretty cool though. This feels like a big aha moment and then here comes the pure white dragons with that, that piercing white light of truth. Let's see what you guys are talking about. Kelsey and Jean and Sandy and Cassie, thank you guys so much for your donations. Melissa says, what a beautiful card. Bonnie says, this card looks like an image of phoenix type rising after the violet flame. Yes, thank you, Bonnie. That's great. That looks great. Thank you, Elena. Tiffany says, oh no, I missed so much. I record everything and I put them on YouTube if you need to go back and listen. Thank you, Nicole. I appreciate you. Tiffany, I'm seeing a recurring theme from last week's meeting. It takes me a second. I'm so like in the moment when I do my readings, I'm trying to think back to what we talked about last week. What were the themes? Erin, this is telling me to stop should and should have and get creative. Pluto, honesty, Tiffany, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Christine, for your donation. Jack says, hi, how do I access the Akashic Records? Um, there's multiple ways to do so. There's a bunch of meditations on Insight Timer. If you just type in Akashic Records, um, there's one by the Honest Guys. Is that who, who it's by, Bonnie? Um, it's linked in our spiritual community. It's the group that I have on Insight Timer. Um, so you can go in there to find it or you could just search it there um that one's like a longer longer um shamanic journey into the akashic records or you can reach out to someone who reads the akashic records because i honestly for myself have a difficult time going into my own records sometimes i don't even know i feel like that's just one of my sound bites like i just say that and i haven't tried to access my own records in a long time because i believe that i don't like it um but I read Akashic Records if you want to uh, have a reading with me. You can find my website in my Insight Timer bio, and you can schedule a reading with me there. I work solely on donation basis. So I read Akashic Records, I read astrology, and tarot, and oracle, and the human design, and a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, so that's an option as well. Um, Bonnie also reads Akashic Records. Yeah, there's people out there. If it's meant to find you, it will. That's what I have to say about that. Thank you, Bonnie. It's a shamanic journey. It's good for me. I like to use it to travel there. April says, there are loads of guided meditations for Akashic journeys, but that would be so cool to work with you. It is one of like my favorite services. Um, and I'm, I don't know. I don't know. You're welcome, Jack. Um, so I guess I could just give you guys a heads up about what's... So I'm here on Wednesday. Okay, Wednesday we're going to talk about Mercury moving into Libra. And then next week, I'm here Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Because on Wednesday, I'm going out of town, and I probably won't be back until November. Um, so next Wednesday, I'm leaving on a 10-day silent meditation retreat that I am beyond excited for. I am so looking forward to this. Um, and then after I get back from that, I'm going on a trip with my husband. So I'm just gonna take pretty much all of October to myself. And then when I return, I am cutting down significantly on my one-on-one -on -one work uh, because it's time for me to dive deeper into creating courses and workshops and teachings. Um, I have so much in here that I have called in help to help me structure and organize this stuff. So um, just know that, like if you want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, my schedule is still gonna be open, but much more limited. Um, 
but I'm gonna be in the works of making a lot more stuff for you to like have me in your pocket at home so you can listen to teachings and stuff. So um, actually I can ask you guys for your ideas because if you're here, if you're one of the people that's been following me, if there's something that you have learned from me that you would like me to expand on and you'd like me to teach more about, send me an email, let me know like, hey, you've taught me about this like can you teach me more uh because i'm at that point in my teaching right now that i f like everything is so second nature to me i'm almost like forgetting what other people don't know and i don't like saying that but i feel like i'm just so deep into like living this that i i need you guys to tell me what you want to learn and then i can give it out uh, but that's my goal moving forward just so that you guys are aware of what's happening and then eventually, yes, I do want to host another women's retreat. I did one in March. I was trying to do one in April and it was not in alignment, so I let it go. Um, but another one of those will be somewhere in the future. Um, yeah, I don't even know. I don't even know. Right now I'm working on courses and workshops and all that stuff. So let me know what you guys want to learn. skip the eclipses um that was not my intention Jean, to skip the eclipses i'm actually a little like not upset but i so i love teaching here on insight timer because it forces me to sit down and research the astrology day to day i'm just like oh yeah an eclipse in libra oh it must mean this but then when i actually sit down with the chart in order to teach it to you guys i have revelations so yeah, I'm, I'm a little sour that I won't have that experience for eclipse season, but next week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, my plan is to like vomit all of October astrology. So we'll see how that comes out. But I do, I know you were just teasing, uh, but it yeah brought up my own. I wish I could be here. Thank you, Greg, Charlotte and Christine. Jean's excited about the courses. April 2, I hope on Insight, yes. Some of the other teachers are making more courses for here. It's amazing. Yeah, I will definitely be putting them out here. Um, I have a good number of people that would benefit from them here on Insight Timer. So, yes. Thank you, Melinda, for your donation. Maria says, love it. That's great for you, Jackie. You're a fantastic teacher. Thank you. I'd love to learn how to read our charts. Cool. Um, have you taken Astrology 101 and like you want more? Is that what you're saying? Uh, if you guys haven't taken my course, I do have one course here on Insight Timer called Astrology 101. So it is 13 days of an intro to astrology so that you know what I'm talking about when I come here and speed talk. <laughs> Bonnie says, let me know if the collective is interesting in scheduling a couple meditations while Jackie's gone. We can do it in our spiritual community. Good idea, Bonnie. Yeah, Bonnie's one of my admins on um, our spiritual community. She puts all of the text recaps of our oracle readings into the group called our spiritual community. Um, and that's actually really cool. You want to set up some meditations while I'm gone. I wonder if you did it just a handful of times at this time, 8.15, well, an hour ago. Yeah, I bet people would be onto that. Let's take a look at that, Bonnie, and see if you can set that up or if I need to do that. But that'd be really cool. Maybe you guys can do the Akashic Records together while I'm gone. That'd be pretty awesome. <sighs> Great idea. Jack, you can find my website uh, in my Insight Timer profile. My next appointments are in November, just a heads up. Um, yeah, you can schedule with me there. You can find it all right there. Chantel, could you do a live on the zodiac and planets, the rulers, qualities, and elements? That's a maybe. <laughs> That's a maybe. We'll see. Maybe if there's like a slow astrology week, I can consider doing that. Zodiac and planets, the rulers, the qualities, and the elements. Yeah, just go over like the chart, like the, yeah. Tiffany, I love that your readings are paired with ways to approach the messages with clarity and implementing practices thoughtfully to move through phases. It's not card vomit. Thank you, Tiffany. 
Karen, thanks for your donation. I appreciate it. And thank you, Greg, for letting Jack know. Bye, Maria. Nice to see you. April says, yes, I love that. Maybe while well, we would normally be joining here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, Joy. She says, Astrology 101 is fantastic. Nicole would like to learn more about the Akashic Records. Ooh, that could be, that could be a course. That's a great course, actually. Thank you, Nicole. Um, Charlotte, I'd love to see you do courses outside Insight Timer. I prefer live classes. Step by step, Charlotte. Yeah, I like that. Um, I guess my hang up with that is like, I don't know how to set it up. That's my thing. I love live classes, you know? Like, I, I would love to teach workshops, like Zoom stuff, but like, how do I set it up? That's where I'm held back in that. Christine wants to learn about the human design. Okay. Okay. Bonnie, maybe this is the collaboration. What do you mean? What collaboration? Thank you guys for your ideas. Um, if you have anything else come up, feel free to email me. My email is in my link tree. Everything is in my link tree. Guys, I'm all over the place. I'm like a spiritual firework. I just like, and then my little ashes land everywhere and then I'm just there forever. So yeah, link tree, everything's there. Oh, that's right. Live workshops on Insight. Yeah, I remember that from a while ago and that's like a weird way to do that. Thank you, April, for that reminder. Charlotte, Mighty Networks. I belong to two groups there. We get together regularly via Zoom, Mighty Networks. I can also use my Patreon to do that type of stuff, I think. Cool, all of this is in the works. Thank you guys for all your ideas. The link tree is only in the app. Oh, the workshops are big now? Yeah, not gonna lie, I haven't been on, um, I haven't been a student on Insight Timer for some time. I've just been so incredibly busy. Um, so I kind of forget all that Insight Timer has to offer. So that's really cool, good to know. Um, no on website, link trees, I don't know, tree. I'm confused. <laughs> Uh, you could just search, just search my name. Just put my name into the Google search bar and I have a pretty unique name, so I'm, I'm sure I'll come up all over the place. Pretty easy to find. Which is strange, because I used to be very, like, secretive and now, like, whatever. Um, okay, cool. Thank you guys for the brainstorming session. That might be my Mercury-Pluto aha. Uh, I wish you the best with balancing this Neptune-Mercury opposition. Right? It doesn't have to be good or bad. This is the energy that's available. How are you going to choose to use it? Are you going to choose to live through the heart? To center yourself through love? To transmute fear into love? What are you afraid of? Just turn it into love. It's the time of learning. You are leveling up to your next lesson. Right? Leveling up to your next uh, level, <laughs> whatever that means for you. And you got your pure white dragons from Orion coming to bring you truth. Truth is just truth. You can accept it with love or you can accept it with fear. The choice is yours, as always. Beautiful. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. I'll see you on Wednesday. Sending love to all. Namaste. Until next time. <laughs>